Hey everyone, welcome back to another session on semantics. Uh, in this session, I would like to introduce uh, you to these three uh, important notions in semantics, namely polysemy, monosemy, and homonymy. In another related video, I will discuss uh, several diagnostic tests that have been proposed uh, by linguists uh, to, you know, determine polysemy and its comparison with monosemy. Yeah, that's in another uh, video. Um, uh, as usual, most of the materials um, come from Nick Rimmer's book, section 5.3. Um, now, polysemy is of Greek origin, uh, meaning many meanings. Uh, it describes a phenomenon where one phonological word form uh, possesses several distinct senses. Um, in other words, the same word form can have different semantic interpretation in different contexts. Um, let's see an example first. The word chair. Um, now I would like you to let's say pause the video and think about any uh, meanings um, that you can think of in relation to the word chair. Yeah. Um, what would be the meanings of chair that you know? Okay. Um, think about that, and I will continue now. Um, I bet the first image that comes up in your uh, mind would be this. Okay. I don't know whether that's correct. But I believe. This is a chair, yeah, a furniture object. And some of you may have also um, think that a chair could mean um, something like this. Okay. In the second image, in the image, in the middle image here, uh, there is a guy, it's like he's like announcing uh, to people that, hey, we are recruiting director. Okay. Um, there is a vacant position for the chair. Okay. I see. There is the object chair, but it is said vacant. Yeah. Um, so it means that he is not looking for another furniture chair. Okay. It's a totally different chair. Um, yeah. So chair, in addition to uh, refer to the furniture object, it can also mean uh, director, head of a committee, or like professorship in a university. Yeah. That's a chair. Um, and this image shows us that hey it, it's not the the chair that we are looking for it's the the person that can uh, fill this uh, chair position and uh, this leader director position okay uh, polysemy of chair and in the uh, image on the right uh, there is a guy holding a chair and I believe he's speaking um, and I will read the caption for you. I worked my whole career to get a chair, and this is it. Okay. Um, since we know a chair is uh, polysemous, yeah, it refers to the object of uh, furniture as well as director. This cartoon, I think, greatly illustrates um, the ambiguity that comes with uh, you know polysemous word. Um, it could mean. It could be that this guy is complaining about uh, he gets only that simple uh, fragile chair, yeah, wooden chair, uh, which is not maybe good comparison to this uh, more sturdy and more stable chair. Or it could also uh, refer to him complaining about um, his, um, you know, his hard work over his career and he didn't get elected for the chair position. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, the ambiguity. Okay. Especially if you see him uh, holding a chair, okay, in front of uh, let's say a group of a committee. Yeah. So the um, it could mean uh, possibly it refers to the chair, uh, the leader position. Yeah. But um, yeah, so polysemous uh, word come with uh, ambiguity in certain contexts that could be used as um, you know humor or joke like in this uh, image there are two other examples um, from the book that I took so number one it's a crazy theory or argument but I'll buy it so the it here uh, refers back to this uh, theory and argument and he gave them one last chance so in the first example, um, you don't really buy a theory, yeah, because 
it doesn't involve any price tag you you buy the theory for one thousand dollar no um yeah so it's not involving any price tag for the theory and any exchange or possession okay um typically you buy something it means that you exchange uh good for money okay or exchange for good with money um and the same with number two um when you give something there is some possession exchange yeah? uh, what you have will be given to that guy but here chance um it's not that feasible yeah you, you don't really give um you know chance as an object but this is more metaphorical yeah so in, in that case um buy and give uh, or give they have more than one meaning okay um as we've seen in this uh, explanation okay they are polysemous um yeah and by a theory by an idea is a common expression meaning that uh, you kind of believe this theory this idea okay right um so what we've seen with the previous two exa uh, three examples is that polysemy actually is reserved uh, as technical term for uh, words which show a collection of semantically related senses yeah there is the meanings of the different meanings of a word should be you know connected in some way um, such as chair as an object and um, I mean furniture object and chair as a person position leader position that typically sit in a more you know special chair yeah which may be different from from the other uh, members yeah so there is some kind of relation and those are the typical uh, phenomenon of uh, polysemy how about polysemy against monosemy um, so monosemy is also of greek origin meaning single meaning uh, not many meaning just one monosemous word contains only single meaning um, and it is prominent in technical terms yeah. technical terms such as ore and appendectomy they typically refer to one idea one concept yeah, one meaning um yeah so that's monosomy and another behavior of monosomous word is that they may generalize uh more specific meanings okay uh they gross offer more um specific interpretations of the word okay think about cousin uh when you say something like here is my cousin okay here is my cousin um it generalize over it glosses over yeah um more specific and distinct interpretation such as here is my cousin my cousin can be the son of my father's sister okay um anak laki-laki dari saudara perempuan ayah saya or this cousin can be the son of my father's brother okay anak laki-laki dari um saudara laki-laki ayah saya or it can also mean the daughter of my mother's brother, anak perempuan dari saudara laki-laki ibu saya. Okay, so that this more specific interpretation, more specific readings are glossed over, yeah, are generalized by the word cousin because cousin is considered to have a single meaning, namely the offspring of parents' sibling. The offspring can be son or daughter of parents' sibling. Parent sibling can be can be sister or brother. Yeah, monosemy. Um, how about polysemy against homonymy? Um, homonymy is also of Greek origin, meaning same name. It means that a single phonological word form possesses meanings that are not related, okay? Um, such as the word bang, um, which can refer to the land area very close to the uh, river, such as in this uh, left picture, or it can refer to uh, financial institution where you save your money yeah it is also called a bank and they there is no uh, such relation that you can connect uh, that you can build between area near the river and financial institution so they are not polysemy okay even though the, the word form is the same bank and Said um, John Said uh, device uh, devices like I think four different uh, classifications of homonymy in terms of 
its syntactic behavior and spelling. So you can have homonym that has um, same spelling, uh, homonyms that have same spelling and same syntactic categories, such as the noun lab, referring to the circuit of a course, such as in uh, MotoGP or um, horse race or in Formula One, yeah, lab. And also not noun lab, which is part of a body. Okay, um, and there is no relation, no any relation, uh, semantic relation between circuit and part of the body. Homonyms can also have spe same spelling, but they have, uh, but they are from different syntactic categories, such as bear. Uh, bear can be a verb. Yeah, bear in mind about this categorization. Okay, bear can also be a noun, uh, the animal. Um, and homonyms can have different spelling but same syntactic categories such as the verbs ring and ring. Uh, yeah, ring and ring. Um, spellings are different, but they all verb. They are all verb. And the verbs also wave and wave. Different spelling, same category as verbs. Um, different spelling and different syntactic categories such as not, which is a negator. Yeah, negation um, and not a noun. Yeah. So this uh, classification is uh, quite useful uh, to you know narrow down the kind of homonymy that you can talk about. Um, let's move to the verbs wave and wave in further detail. They are not um, even though they are pronounced the same wave. Yeah, they are pronounced similarly wave, uh, but they are not um, polysemous because they have different origin historically, yeah. Um, wave is from Old English, Wafian. Wave is from Old French, Kaifer, actually. And originally they were pronounced differently too, yeah. Originally they were pronounced differently, but now they are pronounced in the same way. And their meanings are not related to, okay. Um, in addition to the absence of historical origin, their non polysemous nature is also um, indicated by their unrelated meanings. Um, wave, make a sign with a hand, yeah. wave him a good goodbye, and forgo, release, just let it go. Okay, that's wave. Well, mm, maybe there is a relation, but it's not actually. Yeah, waving, uh, body movement, and forgo is just letting go of somebody. Um, yeah, so that's homonymy. Okay, as a summary, um, we have three uh, notions in semantics that have some relation, polysemy, monosemy, and homonymy. So polysemy is phenomenon where one form, one phonological word form can have more than one meaning, but these meanings are semantically related, conceptually related. Um, we'll see and talk about a metaphor letter uh, that can motivate a connection between different meanings of a word. Monosomy, just one form map onto one meaning. And finally, homonymy is one form that has two different meanings, but they are not related, such as bang, okay, um, uh, river, uh, land near the river, and financial institution. All right, um, that's it. And in the next related video, uh, I'll discuss about uh, some tests for policy. Okay, bye-bye.